Hey everyone, it's been a while. Um, I've been really sick over the last week, so you know, it's these questions of super sick or super poisoned. Um, you know, I'm turning actually 39 years old tomorrow, and um, I've, I've been sick before in my life. I haven't been sick pretty much in years. The only time, the last time I got sick was in 2020 when I had to exercise with an N95 mask and um or uh the surgical mask and a face shield and then my my right gland swelled up and my work and the hospitals all made me take all these covid tests and all of them came negative and i kept telling them i'm like this is just from the bacteria that i'm breathing in from these masks on top of all of the the effort and energy that is going into exercising in a retirement home where the rooms are usually around like 75 degrees um, so it was just like really hot and uh, the doctors, you know, just like, what? They did, but people, dentists and uh, yeah, dentists wear masks all day long and never get sick. And I'm like, the fucking idiots can't even like compare. It's like apples and oranges where, you know, you're comparing somebody who is predominantly sedentary sitting in a very climate controlled room. You know, most dental offices are, are not like sweltering hot versus exercising in a room that's mid 70s and doesn't have any airflow in it besides the heater being on so <clears throat> anyways um my husband wasn't feeling good on monday and he kind of fell down and then i fell down um with whatever on wednesday now i do lean more terrain theory and i personally don't think this is some mythical bug just flying into the air there's still a lot of things in the terrain theory world that i need to learn about um for example it's not you have terrain theory versus germ theory so germ theory is that contagion theory that um, you know, these viruses are spreading through the air and you catch it from one another. Terrain theory is all about more of, <clears throat> more of, um, the individual's body. So when your body becomes too toxic, that's when you get sick and your sick symptoms are your methods of detoxing. That to me actually makes a lot of sense because in the world of exercise science when you are when you're exercising you are increasing temperature you are releasing out any sort of metabolic waste and lactic acid through the breath out so through perspiration and you're also releasing all that metabolic waste through sweating so if you think about a fever you know it's at the elevation of your temperature um, and you start sweating a lot to release out a lot of these toxins. So this has been the weirdest sickness that, um, that I've ever had to where I kind of felt like it, it, I wasn't sick. It was just more of like being poisoned. Um, to give, I guess, a little bit of background and context, like my mom right now in Ohio is really sick. My dad, um, starting last year, he, he lives in Ohio predominantly. He's in Florida in the winter, but he um, has developed tinnitus. And so this, uh, a lot of people have been sick in the state of Washington this past month. And I've noticed some people who have been coming back to like my yoga classes, they're doing a lot of heavy coughing, a lot of phlegmy coughs. Um, <clears throat> my husband has that. You might even tell my voice sounds a little bit off. So I have had that as well. But this has been the weirdest um, sickness that I've ever uh, had. And in reality, it, it's not even in my belief system to get sick. So like when my husband started feeling ill, I didn't fear it. I, I didn't even think that I would, you know, get it or whatever. Um, I guess in terrain theory too, a lot of times when you are around one another, or at least this is what people have been stating, is that it's more of like an energetic um, frequency that uh, is transmitted, if that's the right word. So if you've ever, you know, if you're spiritual and you believe in energy, you can walk into a room and feel that 
the vibration of a group of people is very negative or very positive. So essentially the thought process is why people get sick is because your energetic frequencies are, are sending out alert signals to the, to the people around you that's saying like, hey, we also need to detox and get rid of this stuff out of, out of the system. Um, <clears throat> I guess that would be the same thing concept around like when group of girls start hanging out with each other and they start getting their menstrual cycle around the same time period. It's because their, um, their flow, energetic flow of life is kind of like all syncing up, um, to be, uh, I guess on like a similar time, time wave or pattern. Anyways, um, you know, the skies have been really bad. Um, obviously, today is just a very gray day. I've tried to explain this even to the person in my household and doesn't even want to hear it and says the skies in Washington look the fucking same. And I'm saying I'm not talking about these gray days like you can see right behind me. I'm talking about looking at commercial jets that fly by and don't admit anything. And then you see these other, you know, probably military planes that are flying by that are leaving these smoke trails and um you know we call them chem trails i guess technic the technical term is a contrail but mainstream media and the pbs will down downplay it and just be like oh it's not bad for you and all this other stuff when when in reality uh it's it's a bunch of heavy metals uh, i'm gonna do just a brief, brief second video <coughs> on that. But anyways, why I feel like, so my question is in the world of terrain theory, even when you keep really good health of yourself, like for example, I can't believe it's 2024. I haven't been sick um, since that episode of wearing the mask in 2020. And I, at the retirement home I worked at, especially because I was not jabbed up, I was required to do a swab every single uh, shift. And we did like a weekly PCR. I never once, I never once had a positive reading. So, um, <clears throat> So anyways, uh, I've been sick before, but this, this one felt a little different. And my question within the terrain theory is, where does terrain theory fall when it's talking about mass poisoning? Now, one of my little antique friends, he lives up in Everett. He's, he's pretty sick right now too. He's talking about like inner ear pain, um, a lot of coughing, sore throat. It hurts to drink, but it feels really good to drink as well. So he's experiencing a lot of, uh, you know, we're talking about like a lot of people are sick right now, pretty much from here down through the lungs. So still this um, <clears throat> thoracic type of problem. I can't even think Pul pulmonary, not pulmonary. Uh, anyways, my, my brain is starting to function back because I'm, I'm going back to work uh, this afternoon. Anyways, um, the amount of excruciating pain that occurred in the back of my, my whole head, but specifically more of the back of the head, it, it was beyond painful and where I knew that maybe this wasn't just your general, oh, I, I ate too much sugar at Christmas and got sick is that I Every time I coughed, I was tasting metal in my mouth. I have maybe tasted metal a few times in my life where, you know, you kind of like have coughed up too hard and you get like a little bit of blood. Um, but th this, like, because you're so raw from coughing, but this was different. This was like a very consistent metallic taste. And whatever phlegm I was coughing up... <clears throat> tasted very metallic and that lasted for about three days and then on Sunday I started getting tinnitus so I started getting a lot of ringing in my inner ear I would say my equilibrium was just very off in general to where uh last Wednesday Thursday and Friday morning I was not able to really just stand up and function I could not drive a vehicle at all 
it kind of felt like being drunk and conscious at the same time. Um, I think it was just all this pressure into the head and all the sinus pressure um, that really threw off my balance. But, you know, my I guess it's Tuesday, so my husband's now a little over a week. This happened for him last Monday. So, you know, he's still very phlegmy cough. I'm still not 100% better, but I'm able to eat more solid foods. And I will say, like, this has been, like, an extreme... <clears throat> extreme uh what do you call it just need for thirst my thirst levels are so out of the roof and if i have anything like um i ordered pho broth and and uh you know that has salt in it but just that salty broth i was drinking liters of water afterwards so anything that's like a little bit salty um <clears throat> definitely uh it exacerbated my my need for for more liquid the only thing i wanted to eat um was pretty much water water-based foods for the first 72 hours um yeah, so pretty much broth. I mean, a lot of water-based fruits like oranges, grapes. Uh, what else did I do? Yeah, orange grapes, uh, some apple juice, just anything that kind of felt more hydrating. I actually did feel when I ate the orange, I was starting to feel like instantly almost better. It's like I just kind of felt like all that nutrition going into my body. <clears throat> a lot of um, some of those homeopathy pills definitely kind of helped uh, kick out some of the sinus stuff. But, um, yeah, so with terrain theory and mass poisoning, because I kind of am, I would say like my diet is probably 88 to 90% pretty good. I cannot go back to drinking coffee right now. Like coffee actually sounds very disgusting to me. So all I've been drinking is tea. Maybe in some ways this is like a blessing in disguise. Um, I have not wanted any chocolate or sugar uh which i usually every day i have some coffee and then um you know at dessert i'll eat like a few squares of of chocolate uh generally uh that's the most i have i do have sometimes like in between fitness classes i I only have like 15 to 30 minute break. So if I'm in a, a really big rush, I might just grab like a square of chocolate and, um, you know, something else that I have to uh, kind of sustain and get me through to the next class. But um, the weakness part is what is the most interesting. So my friend who's sick right now in Everett, myself and my husband are still extremely weak now my husband's been eating a little bit more um at least more solid foods than i have been eating but i've just noticed like we didn't have vomiting we did not have diarrhea usually when you get we did have a fever or at least we woke up and the sheets were like soaked in sweat so we probably had some form of a fever but usually when you lose a lot of your you know your insides from vomiting and diarrhea that's when you feel really weak but we didn't have that we just have this you know general body ache fever phlegmy respiratory that was what i was trying to think of earlier respiratory problem and um it's just like going up and down in a yoga class is, is too much i can't do it so anyways, um, I do suggest because I, I guess I can't really link, I can link stuff below, but I think you won't really be able to find it. I think there's a website that's like stopspraincalifornia.org or you know something along those lines. But if you just type in, sorry, my nose is really itchy. I don't mean for this all to be a distraction. Um, that, that's the other thing. It's like I keep getting these like pins and needle uh, feeling on the tip of my nose so anyways um i don't know what the hell has gone on in in washington state if there's anything you know experimental that has been done beyond your traditional spraying of the skies but this the skies are the same here as they were when i was 
in Ohio in December. I mean, they're doing this every single day. They might even be doing this at all hours of the day from day and night. So um, my, my point is when, when you start tasting metal in your mouth, I mean, this, this to me felt like I w it was more poisoning or some sort of heavy metal poisoning or uh, heavy metal toxicity. Heavy metal toxicity is not a conspiracy. You could type that in and even find it on your basic mundane bogus websites like Mayo Clinic and Healthline um, and even the Cleveland Clinic. So, <clears throat> so this is, this is bad. Um, and if you start looking at uh, what um, sickness problems have developed from um, uh, chemtrails, the, you just type in chemtrail poisoning or something like that, or sickness symptoms from chemtrail poisoning, and, and you'll find a few websites, but it definitely does sound like the, the heavy metals are causing these respiratory issues. Tinnitus seems to be a growing trend with people. Um, my friend right now up in Everett as of this morning was having ringing in his ears yesterday and today. So, I mean, th these are symptoms that are not overly common that are now becoming very, very common um, between between all of us. So, in reality, you know, the, this uh spray stuff is probably a lot worse than what we think. The only silver lining that I can see coming from this is because it kind of kickstarted, you know, this need for more, for more liquid, which I probably wasn't drinking enough water in general, but, um, with, with my schedule being a little more packed in February and Jan January and February, <coughs> it might've been, <coughs> it might've been like a little overrun but I could even tell like my skin and any sort of like puffiness under my eyes has not been that bad and has improved because I haven't been drinking caffeine. And I should say, let me just say, I haven't been drinking coffee. I have been drinking green tea, herbal teas, as well as chai tea, um, chai tea bags, not the sugary crap from the box, but, um, but yeah, anyways, I wanted to share this because I'm also really interested if other people have been going through kind of the same thing. I mean, like I said, getting sick is not in, in my consciousness. It's not in my psyche. So um, I don't, you know, a lot of spiritual people are like, oh, those who believed in COVID got COVID because it's within their belief systems. And it's like a lot of this isn't in my belief system. Um, I live a pretty fairly active healthy life not perfect but um you know like I don't I don't even dr I don't drink alcohol you know, things like that like things that normal people are doing abusing their bodies every single day um a lot of those practices I you know they're, they're not in my uh, wheelhouse essentially <clears throat> but if you're starting to notice these things kind of pop up in your life um I do suggest looking up more chemtrail poisoning and I have a few friends who, uh, one person out in Australia started making his own colloidal silver and said once he started taking colloidal silver, he has not been sick. And But, but before that, he used to get sick rather frequently. Um, and uh, he believes that colloidal silver and silver is a lot of what is missing, not only within our bodies, but also within the soil. And uh, that definitely makes sense. Because with soil management, big, the big problem today is that we have such depleted soil from all these pesticides, herbicides, and glyphosate is that, you know, our food isn't as nutrient dense as what it used to be. Um, so uh, all of your electrolytes and things like that are actually found in the soil and that those minerals and nutrients go into your food, that food goes into you. So when you have depleted shitty soil, um, like most of Australia and United States has, it's uh, not going to be that good. So I'd be very curious to know what you think, especially like in terms of the terrain theory perspective, like where does poisoning play in? Because it's kind of hard. It almost seems, um, I don't want to say inevitable, but I mean, it's 
you you really have to uh you really have to have like a pretty pinned down lifestyle to avoid uh getting sick from any sort of poisoning but you know who knows maybe maybe something specifically here happened 5g could be going on i don't know there's so many factors here but um yeah <laughs> even somebody like my husband he's gotten sick less than i than i have and uh and and he drinks beer so anyways have a great day and see you later bye bye